Okay, so um, I'm sure, like yourselves, you're watching this video, so you watched tens or 50 so, 50 or so YouTube videos, you've done your research, you've looked at all the forums and different things. Um, that's what I did, looked at everything. Um, I also tried a normal mountain bike. Um, uh, my main reason for buying a, one of these bikes is, is a, to go off-road to accompany my wife on her horse. Um, she's a little bit nervous rider, so uh, she likes to have some company. Um, since my horse died, um, basically, it's nice to get out uh, and uh, with her again and, and ride around the, the farm tracks. These are farm tracks. They're, they're not... They're not um, uh, you know trails or anything that have been pounded by lots of bikes they're just farm tracks so they're very bumpy because of that and horses so when it's been wet and then they're dried it's like going over roots continuously effectively um, so um, that's the sort of thing I wanted to get when I got this normal um, mountain bike it, I was walking as much as I was riding the blooming thing to be fair on the on the road absolutely no problem Yep, absolutely. It was it was no problems at all. I could have done it. I mean, it was a it was a pretty decent mountain bike. It was a two thousand pound plus bike when it was bought purchased. You know, it was four or five years old. Um, but it just wouldn't do the job. So, so I did all this research. Uh, I, I really wanted to get a fat tire uh, bike. However, all the ones I liked weren't available in the UK. So. Um, I, I didn't go there. I also looked at a few others um, that were more expensive than this. Um, I sent set myself a budget of around twelve hundred pounds, and I, if you're like me, you push it a little bit, and I was prepared to go up to a bit more. Um, but because it was locked down and everything else, it was quite tricky to to get um, get anybody to deliver them in decent time as well. And I wanted, you know, this. This, this side of Christmas I wanted to use now in the good weather so um, I so I tried to contact a few other companies and ask them how long the delivery was and quite honestly they didn't even get back to me let alone tell me what the delivery time would be so I scrapped that idea contacted um, went on eBay found the same bike which had been in my shortlist uh, of five or six bikes and quite honestly I think it was about the, the second cheapest or maybe even the cheapest um, so you think well you might as well start there I found a, a seller called Krumer that's K-R-U-M-R -R. he's in China it was advertised just short of 800 pounds uh, which was cheaper than most uh, uh, and his advert he said delivery to the UK would take 7 to 12 days um, now I took that with a pinch of salt you know as we're in lockdown and everyone's struggling to deliver quickly and China's a long way away anyway I ordered and paid for it on the 1st of June um, on the 12th of June when the 12 days had, had gone past I wrote to this groomer and asked him if he could tell me when I could expect the same bike delivery he wrote back to me the same day telling me not to worry it's on its way he gave me a DPD link and tracking number told me it was in the Netherlands and whatever happens he will make sure my purchase and everything was as it should be or words to that effect in broken English uh, I'm sure you all had those emails. Um, I used I used this tracking number. I got an email. I got an email and text to say my package would be delivered on the 15th of June. So that's 15 days after I've delivered it, between 11:21 and 12:21 p.m. And sure enough, on the 15th of June, at 11:50, it arrived. Hooray! I'm very pleased I was too. The the van pulled up. Bought the cardboard box to my porch, uh, took a picture of it with my feet 
as they do, trying to pose, but he said no, no, they're not doing the faces, just the feet. Um, the box, as, as you can see in this video, here was in great condition, probably the best I've had, to be honest. I've, I've had in the past, I've had some horrendous deliveries. There were boxes totally smashed up, uh, that meant there was nearly nothing left in them. Um, I've had Hermes deliver very expensive items to inside my dustbin at the bottom of my drive on bin collection day. And they, they were then tipped into the refuse collection lorries. I found Hermes to be the worst. They, they text saying your package is going to be there between X and Y, but they don't turn up. Um, they do eventually, to be honest, most of them, unless they put them in the bin. Um, you know, they say we tried to deliver, but you weren't in when I was. And I'll let me assure you, I've got two Labradors that would bark loud enough to wake the dead. I find it's a shame um, as if retailers were to tell you who was the delivery company we could put the bad ones out of business and keep the good ones like DPD going. And that way we get a better service. DPD were first class. Big shout out to you guys, keep up the great work. Um, anyway, back to the same bike. It's a 350 watt version. I opened the box, everything was present and correct. I took the battery out, started charging it. Um, then went about assembling it. I watched a couple of videos on how to do this before starting. So I haven't done a video on this as there are plenty out there. The instruction manual is not that great, but the build was easy. Uh, I took my time. It took me just over an hour. I had to make a small adjustment to the front disc brake as it caught on the wheel very slightly when it spun round. Um, I took my time with this. Um, the most awkward bit of the assembly was the rear mudguard, or fender as they say. This was fiddly and it was very flimsy. Also, every time you adjust the seat, you have to adjust the mudguard also. The front mudguard's not much better. Um, the back one you can see goes, um, rattles about a bit when it's moving along. The front one gets, the mo gets moved. Um, and it's a bit crooked now. Well, I'm just realizing that now. I thought I heard a little noise last time I was out on it. Um, but um, yeah, so and also when you're in muddy old fields, the mud just gets trapped underneath, um, underneath there. And last time I went out when it was wet across the fields, I had to get a stick and pry it all free. Um, a little bit about myself I'm six foot. I'm uh, 195 pounds, thereabouts. Um, if you've asked me that question 12 weeks ago, I would have been 180 something. Oh, definitely 10 pounds heavier than I should be, um, if not a bit more. I, and that's one of the reasons, another reason I got the bike, I want to get a bit fitter, um, enjoy the countryside a little bit and accompany my wife uh, on the um, on, the, on her horse um, and this bike is a good fit I, I i am also the wrong side of 50. i'm last time i rode a bike regularly was 40 something years ago when i used to bike to school um, it's not something I do it, so you know this was one of my considerations you know I, I, I think there's purists out there that say oh e-bikes cheating and all the rest but I think if it gets you go gets you on a bike and gets you some sort of exercise it's got to be a good thing surely um, and and this has and I am thoroughly enjoying cycling um, everywhere you know I've even been out in a bit of rain today which amazed me because I'm only ever a fair weather rider normally
Right, this is me on uh, one of the tracks um, we often ride with the horse. Um, uh, it's, you know, it's, it, it's, 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 a, it's a farm track, you know, just tractors use it. It's little, little bumps all the time, uh, as you can see, bounces around, but the suspension it, it is absolutely fine of it. You can actually see the, the, the rear mudguard there, that's wobbling like crazy. And, and that's a little bit annoying, it, it, it does wobble about, gives a bit of vibration, a bit of rattling uh, noise. But I'm, I'm riding this, drones, filming the drone, and uh, I've got some Mavario glasses on, they're BT300s that I can see through and see the, the drone at the same time and it's on active track and I've specially done this little piece because there's no trees one side of this um, so I can get the footage and then you've got the on online the uh, chess camera showing you the, the, the onboard experience if you like and, and the speedo at most of the times which is in kilometres um, per hour um, but you can see you go along these tracks 20, 21 now I think we go up to about 25 no problem um, bit of a close miss there, so I had to stop um, with, the, with, the, with the drone there, so it cuts and, and goes into another piece. Um, but yeah, these are typically the, the tracks, and then, then there's a lot of headlands that go up as well, which is just grass. They've just been cut, actually, ready to take the crops in in a, in a few weeks' time. But um, yeah, it, it goes with this really, really well. Um, yeah, it gets a bit slippery when it's wet. You get a shower on this, which I've had a couple of times. Um, it's it's quite slippery, moves around uh, uneven, but no problem. Um, uh, it's it's good fun. Uh, you can see, look, get up to 26 now. Again, being lifting off the saddle a bit uh, makes it a bit more comfortable. I don't know, I say saddles. I don't think there. I don't think there is a, 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 a saddle that's. Um, that's comfortable in my opinion personally um, but this one yeah it's not a bad track and then shortly I'm going to turn on to um, the, the I'll meet up with uh, my wife on, on a horse and then we turn on to one of the what we call the daisy tracks because they it's all set aside and they put um, they, they, but they've cut these but um, you know it's 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 been ploughed and a bit bumpy and you know there's the only things that have been along it long it you can see my front forks are shaking quite well there well you can see from the from the hands at, at, at how much you're getting but again it, it deals with it very very well and, and it's not that uncomfortable at all um i'm quite enjoying it actually um definitely so yeah be good Right, this is a mound that um, we run the horses up. It's a, it's a steep, it's it's a one in four, uh, short, you know, it is effectively four metres long, uh, goes up by one, one metre and then down the other side. Um, full of hoof, rinse and sows the field that I'm in. Um, this was the first day I got it, um, this bit of filming, as I wanted to see how it, how it went on the um, on the I knew this was really bumpy and horrible because we've had a horrible wet winter and um, the horses have just poached it up now you know you can you say hey, I'm not used to driving riding it or anything tricky that because you go up that short bit of hill and your assist kicks in and then you're at the top and you've got to turn you've got to remember to touch those brakes to disengage the assist to then turn so that takes a bit of get, getting used to um saying that you say this was the very first day i got it and um it's it's you know it, it not bad i'm sure i'll get better at it or sure i have got better at it um yeah but i go around around a few times just to just from different directions um just to try it i use the throttle a bit I think sometimes but generally I'm using the assist to get up there um, yeah and that's about it for that and then I come around the corner and this is all you know say bumpy bumpy old roads um, tracks I mean bumpy old tracks but it can it can still sing along quite nicely and I th I'm, I'm pleased I'm pleased with the suspension the suspension 
is very very good so much better than that than the old uh, um, mountain bike I, I've tried to do the same thing with them and, and you couldn't you wouldn't want to ever sit on the on the on the um, seat right yeah and this is my, my daughter um, uh, she well she hadn't she hadn't this was her very first time on it because um, this was the same day um, and you can see that um, she uses the throttle she's got 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 used to the throttle and she uses it uh, she said oh, I was a bit bumpy I find it hard to pedal so I just use the throttle um, and it goes along nicely uh, it's the same bit we did a few takes on the same piece because again I wanted the drone not to bump in any trees and things like that so I've got to watch out for that um, but you can see it bumpy away but she just she just puts her foot on the throttle she's got a friend lives about 15 K away and she goes down there on it and then she comes back and she does that journey in really good time really quick because she texts us just when she's leaving and um, when she comes back and it, it does the job it's given her some some freedom so we sort of share it um, both of us it's probably why it's done 200k already in in the two weeks I've had it but um, yeah it, she enjoys it uh, it's, it's a good thing gets her some exercise um, I think this shows the maneuverability of it um, you know so it's the first time Eloise is on there you know she's been on it for about half an hour and yeah okay she could have done this <laughs> this is a little bit tight couldn't carry, keep on that path there but it's it's not hard to move around it's uh, it's easier to steer uh, these people go on about the, the light weight ones I'm sure they're better but for, for a novice like me and, and my daughter it's absolutely adequate I also uh, rode her around without using any battery and uh, it was absolutely fine had no problems no issues so um, this is uh, one of my uh, road runs one of my initial ones um, might be able to see I think I'm about I don't know I think that's about 35 kilometers that's all I've done uh, on it then when I've gone for this one um, these are the sort of tracks I ride, this is the roads around me, you know, definitely minor, minor roads. You'll find grass growing up in the middle of them, uh, lots of debris in there, lots of potholes and, and uneven surfaces. You know, this is a slight hill all the way up here actually, it's a, on the way back you can fly down here actually, it doesn't look much but it, it's, a, it's a reasonably um, consistent hill all the way up here. You can see I'm doing 26. I'm on assist 5. Um, I've not got the hang of these assists much because I don't find that much difference between assist 5 and assist 2 or 3 really. I use 1 or 2 when I'm out with the horse because I, you know, when we're walking with the horse, the horse walks at about 5k that's all. So, and that's quite tricky if you, if you get anywhere under 5k it's quite hard to keep a balance keep your balance um, but the only thing I have noticed is if if you use the throttle which I only use at the bottom of a hill usually especially if I've turned into a hill and just about to slow down then turned in to a hill um, if you use the throttle a lot the assist seems to take more to kick in it doesn't kick in so quickly um, but um, but you know the, the the throttle is just as good as if you want full assist push the throttle full um, quite often when I'm on with the horse I can use the throttle to keep a steadier pace because if I pedal the assist comes in and it'll shoot me off faster I want to go so, so I can use a tiny bit of the throttle just to keep me going at 10 or, or, or something uh, well whatever 5, five to 10 kilometers an hour I can do that but uh, say so these are uh, these the tires are, are, are lower uh, pressure and they're on say about 38 I think I've probably lost a little bit more since I put them down to that because I've been out a few rides um, and the suspension I haven't locked off because it's just 
um, let's just, just forget to do it to be fair. So that might make a bit of a difference. Um, but it, it sings along nicely, it gets on okay. Um, and coming up here, we're, we're going to go get on a B road, which is, you know, a bit better surface just coming up. And you'll see there the sort of speeds that we can get to. Um, I made, I did have my map, my run, running for this ride as well. So it was telling me all the stats as we, as we get it and I'll put them up on screen as they come along. But um, you can see here, look, get up to 30, 31, um, you know, it, it's 30, 31 and it's, it's easy enough. I think if you want to go any faster, on my legs, I don't think we'll go much faster than that. You, you need another gear or so. I might have 21 gears, but I'm in top gear. I don't, when I go off road, I change the gears. I, I put it on, let's say there's 21 gears. This is in 21. If I don't know if that's 21 or one you call it, but anyway, it's, yeah, it's 21. I'm in for the road work all the time. Never change it. For off road, I'm usually in about seven. So I just take them the, the first cog down. So I'm, I'm on 14. So that would be gear 14, wouldn't it? To the top one of the second the second cog. Um, so this is telling me what we've done so far. So nine minutes, 39 seconds. Overall speed for two miles, 12.4 miles per hour. And the split speed, in other words, the last mile, which includes that nice smooth road um, on flat, 14.6 miles per hour. Um, going along there, and we're doing 27 uh, now. So obviously that's in miles per hour. Gives you an idea of the miles per hour. And the, the clock's showing kilometers per hour. I did change the clock to a miles per hour, but, but I didn't like it because it just seemed too slow when you've got a smaller figure on there. So I prefer to have the, the 30s as I'm so used to driving the car with miles per hour. I seem to think I'm, I'm doing a lot faster this way around. Um, and you can see, yeah, obviously this is double speed all this, if you, if you didn't realize, just to, to get through in a bit. Um, yeah, so, um, so it goes along, this is the sort of speed you go, really. Um, 20, I, 25, I get, if I get a bit tired, I'll use the throttle. Um, and for the hills, especially the beginning of the hills, I'll use the throttle. Um, but it goes along really nicely. Um, very steady. I've, I've heard people say the tyres aren't any good. Well, for the little I know, they're fine for me at this point in time. Touch wood, I'm not going to get a, a, a puncher. Um, I had a car behind me here, I think, and um, so I just gave him a bit of room to come past. And slowed up a bit. Um, typical, we had to turn off as well. Uh, there you go. Uh, and yeah, back to back to sea roads more like now, the small roads, uh, tracking down through the countryside. Uh, there's a nice downward hill down here and um, where the um, suffer punches are. So look, you can see I've done three miles now. 14.15 is the overall speed over three miles and the split is 15.9. And I'll be going for 13 minutes and 25 seconds. So um, yeah, that's that sort of thing. Yeah, it's a nice, nice little spot here. Get down to end up at 36. Um, yeah, I'm not used to riding a bike, so I probably wouldn't go the, re I don't really let it go down the hills yet anyway. And the brakes, the brakes are, I mean, they're better than I remember my push bike of, of the 70s, that's for sure. Uh, but um, of course you've got, you're always going at a reasonable speed. So, um, at first of all, I thought they weren't that good, but I think they just needed bedding in and, and, and that, they'll stop, they'll stop you. Um, I'm sure when they talk about these brakes, different types of brakes, they are better than, than this. But uh, I don't think, you know, if that car was on the, too far on my side of the road, would I have been able to, to stop for it? Well, I think I got in the hedge a bit and, and, and just about, made it would have both halved the half speed of speed anyway um 
then past the Suffolk punch field. That's why I have a little look over here, but I don't think it was all, they're all in the shade, cooling off, so you can't actually see them, I'm afraid. But um, there are a couple of sheep you can see, but the Suffolk punches are, are in the shade. Very nice to see. Yeah, and we're, we're going along here nicely. over here um, had a little look they had a, a it meant to be a barn conversion but it looks like an office type thing it was up for sale and I thought I'd have a quick look at it but anyway and you can see I moved off there I just gave a little bit of throttle get me going again and then I'm um, pedaling um, yeah coming up back there's stats 21 minutes and I've done five miles 14.37 uh, overall over five miles split was a bit slower but then I stopped um, I stopped at that uh, place for a couple of minutes yeah these are poppies look at those poppies they're fantastic doesn't do justice really should have gone off road and driven through them that would have made a good 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 bit of camera work um, Spotted some uh, racing bikes up here, road road bikes, and I thought, oh, come on, let's see if this thing, how fast we can go past it, if we can catch them and go, go, go past them. So, uh, and they turned off the same. Well, I could go either way here, but I thought, well, I'm going to go past them, and um, so I came past here, and you'll see, I'll quickly shoot past them, no problem. They got a fair bit of kit on the back, but. Um, I then thought to myself, well, I'm on an electric bike. I don't want them to think I'm not pedaling, so I've got to keep pedaling. And this is a hill. This is a, uh, you know, it's not huge, but it's it's an upward climb for a long, long way, this is. And because I knew I had them behind me, I thought, I've got to keep pedaling, I've got to keep pedaling. Because um, I don't want to think, think I'm cheating or anything. And um, so I carried on. You can see I'm flagging a bit now. I'm flagging a bit. Um, because this hill's going on and on and on. And I'm sort of edging at that throttle. I think, well, oh, can I just get a bit of throttle going? I don't think I actually have used it yet because up the end here, there's a there's a, a turn and it's a bit of a mucky old road. As you can see, look, sand and stuff, and gravel all over the place. So now I had a little go with the throttle. I think I am quite tired now. Um, so I think you'll find, I thought, all right, it's time for a rest because I've gone around the corner. They couldn't see me anymore, so now I'm using the throttle, as you can see. Um, I'm having a rest, and it's saving like 24, to, yeah, 24, 25 miles an hour. And it's a, it's a still a slight hill, but it's not much of one now. It's a slight, and then um, I'm going onto another road. So now I use the throttle there to get myself going out of the junction. It gets you get you going quickly and then I'm back on now this is a this is a, a pretty decent hill it's a good hill down got a sort of an S bend more or less on the flat and then it goes up and up um, it starts off steep gets a little bit shallower then gets another steep piece but um, yeah that, that's and yeah nice nice little bit to go through this is um, but the hill goes up to that, you can see the house is halfway up that hill. So it um, goes on for quite a while. So that's the stats overall. 38 minutes was the ride. My overall speed over nine miles was 14 and a half miles per hour. I burnt some calories and, and I gained some, some height, um, 279 elevation as well. And that's maximum speed was 
um, and my fastest uh, one one mile was um, that. Now this is a big hill, a big hill. Uh, so I thought I just down it was a bit of a grey day. It'd been raining a bit. Um, it was only this morning I did it actually. Um, so this is um, sixteen days after I bought the I got the bike. Um, shame that they'd. I didn't realise they'd resurfaced it. But you know, Suffolk doesn't have big hills, so this is this is as, as big as they get really. There's a couple, there's a couple I've got that, um, yeah, they're, they're good, good hills. I would not get up them on a non e bike. That I guarantee you, I would not get up up these hills on that. Um, So I wait until it gets down a little bit, and once we get there, and then I've got to put the throttle. And you can see I've put a fair bit of effort into that because it's um, I'm moving around a bit. But we're still doing 24, so it's keeping its speed. Obviously, it's not going to assist you over the 25 anyway. So you know, if you're trying to go up faster than that, you've got no chance. So I'm doing 26 to be fair. So. It's doing well. It's doing well to look at the DPD guy. He's not bringing me another bike there, but nice guy waiting for me. And uh, yeah, and we, we go on there. And then there's a there's another hill that um, uh, is coming up. Um, this one's a, a, a quite a sharp sharp hill. Definitely need. Well, on any normal bike you'd need to get the speed down it before you get up a bit um, but this one you'll see the surface is different so when we switch to it and yeah it's, it's a it's a good hill this good hill both ways sharp up and down pain in the car actually because if you meet anything here you've got to reverse on a long way but either way so it's, it's not so good for that um, you get get a few of the school buses come up and down this as well so that's not that's not great we want to meet one of them on, on the bike that's why i'm not going too hard at the moment there shouldn't be many school buses about so yeah look uh, 34 to the 35 to the bottom of this hill and then I gotta go up the other side. And the biker coming down. I don't know what type of bike he had. So you can see I'm swaying a bit to, to keep the pedals going. So it's a good workout. Anybody says it's not a good workout, it is a good workout on a e-bike or not. You know, you've gotta you've gotta give it some pedaling. So um, here is um, myself accompanying my wife Claire on a horse sage. Um, uh, the bike keeps up with her in trot, um, in canter, and even in gallop it'll keep up with her. And it's uh, really enjoyable. So while you're watching this in the background, I'm going to go through the bad points of the bike and the good points. Okay, the bad points. The mud guards, they rattle, they move, and they clog up with wet mud when it's wet, obviously. Um, uh, but this is an off-road issue. On the roads, I don't think you'll notice these points much. Um, they are still poor quality, and the fixings are very basic. The assist, it's great if you want to go fast as possible, or between 10 and 30 kilometers per hour um, but if you want to roll along at a constant slow speed the only two ways you can do this is to turn the bike off so no assist no throttle or use the thumb thumb throttle only if say you're trying to go about 5k walking speed and you've got the assist on it'll kick in and you'll be up to seven or eight kilometers an hour you'll then stop pedaling or brake to get yourself back to the 5k you want to do 
and this becomes a constant seesaw um, between four and eight kilometers an hour. Not great if you're trying to talk to someone as they walk beside you. Now, I looked at bikes with a walk assist for this reason. I, I, you know, I knew um, this was something that I thought I could do with because my wife walks along on the horse quite often. She doesn't trot all the time, she doesn't canter all the time or gallop all the time. Uh, she does an awful lot of walking. So, you know, it, 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 I knew it was something. But I also knew that the same bike didn't have it when I bought it. But I just wish it had. Uh, the saddle. You'll want to change this in my opinion, but that's easy to do. I've heard on other videos and forum, forums that the pedals are poor. Well, I would disagree. My pedals are great, never slipped. I only bike in normal trainers. Uh, however, my pedals don't fold like the ones that were getting the complaints. So maybe this has been changed in a later version of the same bike. I don't know. But pedals are great. Um, a good thing to remember is to turn the bike off when you're doing something on the bike, as the assist can kick in and move. Um, if, if you move the pedal or, or a wheel or touch the throttle accidentally, this has happened to me already. I found myself fighting against the motor to stop the bike ending up in a heap on the ground. The key, it's underneath so you can't see what position you're in, but again you get used to it and it's not like you have it, have it unlocked to fold it and on. So you know, you, you couldn't have it it couldn't be on when it's on the unlock per position it's only got one position which is locked the bike so it can't fold anyway so you know um, the only thing I worry about is my key won't come out when the bike is switched on but with bumpy terrain I do worry it might when I'm going along so I've put a strip of velcro through the key and around the wires just in case um, the instructions that came with the bike are rubbish if you're the sort of person who likes to read through instructions before you build and ride, these won't suffice, well, won't satisfy you. Um, if you're like me, never read instructions, just watch a YouTube video, it's all pretty easy. It is easy, you know, I'm not, I'm not great at putting things together, but it was, it was a, it was a double, it was a double. Um, you can't change the height of the handlebars. I've got used to the setup now, but at first I was considering buying a handlebar extender. I also got pins and needles uh, the first couple of times on road rides, and I realised I had the handlebars so that the, the, I was using the palm supports much too much. Um, and, and so putting too much pressure on that. Um, so I just loosened and twisted, twisted so I had even pressure across the whole of my hands and I haven't had that issue since. So that was just a setup. I got a little bit wrong. Um, I'm not sure if this is a good or bad point, but the battery seems to read 100% most of the time. Even when I've done 20 plus kilometers, um, I'm not sure it's accurate um, in its reading. It did go down to 65% after about 38 kilometers, but I would be happier if I saw it going down 99, 98, 97% as I used it. The only time it reduces in that way is when you use the throttle. Only then does it go a percentage point at a time, stopping at about 60 odd. But it's basically saying if you keep using that throttle that way, you're going to end up at 60%. That, that's what, how I'm reading that, that it's saying that. But when you take the, your, your thumb off the throttle, it usually returns to 100%. So who knows? Like the good points. 
the obvious, I think it's very reasonably priced, unlike some of the videos I watched of that title, only to find the cheapest they were reviewing were four grand plus. I've seen others in the 20 grand range. In my opinion, even if you didn't mind spending that sort of money on a bike, your personal fitness and skill would be the biggest factors in the success of such an investment. And you guys aren't watching this video. If your goal is to compete in some Dakar downhill slalom for mountain bikes, then the same bike is not for you. If you're like me and just trying to get back into cycling and want a bit of assistance with hills and you might like to explore a little off-road, then this bike is a great fit. Um, I can see some people who will get bitten by the biking bug and they will steadily progress to more specialised machines even when starting with the same bike. If you want a commuter bike, the same bike is comfortable. It has a good presence on the road, sure-footed and capable. From my experience, I believe it would do over 50 kilometers of range on a charge with assist, throttle and some pedaling. This all depends, obviously, on all the different factors, hills, how much you pedal, wind, surface you're on um, but I would be confident to travel 50k and that should become even further as I get fitter or you get fitter and turn down the assist from five to the threes and twos and ones um, it works very well for me at six foot 1.83 meters um, I say I'm about 190 pounds or 85 kilos it works fine for my daughter and wife they're five foot five and five foot six respectively uh, so about 1.65 meters and obviously much lighter very much lighter um, so all in all I am really really pleased with this product um, I think it's great it's getting me some exercise another great thing is I've lost a bit of weight as well uh, since I've had it I'm, I'm, I'm six pounds lighter and that's uh, in just over two weeks so I'm really happy about that hope you've enjoyed the video um, please let me know in the comments give some likes that'd be great um, I don't you know my videos I don't really worry I've just I do lots of lots of little videos for, for different things uh, small small time I'm not really after masses of, of, of users usually but um, if you'd like to please give me a thumbs up that would um, make me maybe do a follow-up Cheers. Bye.